Well, how y'all are this afternoon? This is your buddy George Jones over at the Bergen Gun Range on a nice, bright, sunny, beautiful day. It ain't raining like handfuls and cats. With my next installment on eight, I got this old used gun. The old used gun I've got today is this guy. The Smith & Wesson Terrier. Now, the Terrier, this gun is a pre-1950, 1955, it's a 1950, mid-1950s gun. Uh, we don't know. I didn't get a chance to run the serial number on this gun. The serial number on this gun is a five-digit serial number, and it is in the 60, uh, it's a six, starts with a six, so it's up there. Uh, the Terrier is a 32 Smith & Wesson long caliber revolver. It is made much in the same way as you would see a Model 36 today. Uh, it does not have a model number designation. It's made before that. Um, you know, it's got all the characteristics of a post-World War II, pre-1962 gun. You know, it's a pin barrel. Got the big old screw over here on the side of it. And, that retains the nose bushing, and and uh, it's got the uh, small Smith & Wesson logo on the left-hand side of the gun. It's a round butt configuration. It's a very nice gun. This gun is in probably 85% condition, and considering the age of the gun, to find one in this condition is is pretty, uh, pretty unique. Um... Uh, it's just a, a very nice gun. Now, I shot this gun earlier, and it shot really well. I was standing up here by, beside the bench on double action, hitting the steel silhouette target at 25 yards. Uh, we're going to try this guy out. It's a six-shot, 32 Smith & Wesson long caliber. It's, um, I'm really impressed with it, just to tell you the truth. Um. Uh, it's one of those guns that they ought to be making today instead of trying to make something fancy to replace it. Um, the ammunition that we have is uh, Siller and Bellet, which is also loaded by Fiocchi, and you can also get 32 Smith & Wesson Long in Winchester and Remington if you can find it. Um, 100 grain, uh, and it's wad cutter. The ammunition is of the wad cutter variety as you can see it right there it's flat on the end or it's got a little dimple on the end of it but it's even with the end of the case 100 grain bullet you can also get um, semi-jacketed hollow points in this caliber which uh, there it is semi-jacketed hollow point it's also a 125 grain 115 I don't have the box that it come out of but I looked at it, and it is actually made by Brass Tech. So I'm pretty sure Brass Tech, which is a pretty good South American ammunition manufacturer, probably makes this ammunition as well. Uh, with all of that having been said, our mission here is to evaluate the defensive capability of the firearm and whether or not the firearm works as agreed. So let's get on down with that. Let's get some ear mufflers on here. Load this gun up in the normal way that you would load a Smith & Wesson revolver. Uh, this guy is the Terrier. Now, they made a similar gun to this during this period that this gun was made called the Banker Special. The Banker Special was in six or seven shot 22 long rifle. I've never actually seen one. But it was also in 32 short Smith & Wesson. The little bitty, short little bitty short Smith & Wesson. Okay, so I'm going to see if I can't hit the old, uh, I got a, a sheet of art paper down there with a three inch target dot on it. We're going to see if we can hit it off the bench. I'm going to go three on single action and three on double. Ooh, that was 
bad wide. All right, let's try it again. A little closer. A little closer yet. All right. Three on double action. That's a little better. Ooh, that's much better. For some reason or another, I always shoot better on double action than I do on single action. All right, we'll get that guy out there. Load that guy, put us six more in there. This gun actually, for what it is, it is pretty good. The 32, 32 in the wad cutter loading is still very popular in Europe. It's a very popular target cartridge in Europe. Um, a lot of the European centerfire pistol teams still use guns chambered in this cartridge. Ah. Okay, so we're not taking this gun to Camp Perry, but uh, let's go down there and take a look at our marksmanship right quick and see how we do. This is how I get my cardio running back and forth. <laughs> you know, if I, was, if I was an intelligent man, I'd buy me a spotting scope. That was a total of 12 rounds. Uh, the trigger's pretty rough, pretty tight. Uh, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve in there. All of those, almost all of those, would be in the eight and nine and ten. You know, on a regular police-style target. Uh, that's very acceptable marksmanship for this style of firearm at this range. Uh, you know, of course, this gun is designed to defend yourself at arm's length or maybe, maybe 20 feet, okay? This is a very acceptable, acceptable gun. Uh, this is a highly collectible gun. This is not what you would want to be out carrying on your person every day with the possibility of having to, you know, go to a shooting police shooting review board, you know, and, and wind up with this gun at the gun ox or at the gun crime lab for six or eight months until it cleared. Uh, 32 caliber revolver is an effective personal defense firearm? Yes. This gun, absolutely not. Uh, I estimate the value of this gun at 85% condition being somewhere in the neighborhood of $650 to $700. Uh, this is a highly collectible estate-style firearm, and this is not something you'd want to take out and defend yourself with every day. So having said all of that, it is an outstanding little gun. I wish that they manufactured this gun today. I would probably carry one. Uh, it'd be fantastic to have it in a bodyguard configuration. This 32s are a good gun, good option for someone who can't manage 357 Magnum 2 inch revolver, can't manage a 45 ACP officer's ACP style gun, you know, can't manage a pocket nine that just kicks the tar out of you. But this is a very pleasant gun to shoot. This would be a cool gun to have in a square butt and four and a half inch six barrel. Well, all right then. The little terrier, something you hardly ever see. Uh, we're very happy to have it. This gun comes from the collection of my cousin Ed Jones down in Pulaski County, and uh, we're very lucky to be able to have this gun. You probably won't see very many videos on it on YouTube. All right then, folks. Uh, like it, take, share, if I commentate, and subscribe. 
Um, if you uh, like my content and want to support my little channel, you can drop me a dollar in the Patreon bucket on the way out the door. And uh, I'm going to go out and find another cool gun and make you another cool video. All right, then. We'll see y'all.